Yo, what's up? It's Nez, and welcome to our series where we talk about all things gaming and pop culture. If you've been following our misadventures on the channel, then you probably know that for the last month or so, I've been exclusively playing Night in the Woods and only recently finished that emotional roller coaster of a game. For a game that mascots cute and zany animal protagonists, the game made me feel things I haven't felt in a long time about a narratively driven game. From its intriguing plot to its starkly realistically written characters. That's why I decided to dedicate a whole episode to exploring why I love the game so much and why I believe that games need more stories like Night in the Woods. Consider this my informal review. Night in the Woods is a narratively driven platformer developed by the studio Finji. It follows the story of the college dropout Mae Borowski, a rebellious cat as she returns to her hometown of Possum Springs, only to find out so much has changed in both her town and the people she's come to know. Supported by her closest friends, the intelligent and hardworking alligator Bee, the kind-hearted skeptic of a bear that is Angus, and the awesome and eccentric fox Greg. Greg rules, okay? May and the gang go on an adventure of self-discovery and growing up as they investigate increasingly strange and paranormal occurrences around town. I feel that the greatest strength of Night in the Woods compared to other interactive fiction coming-of-age narratives aimed that young adults like Life is Strange or Oxenfree and why it's worked the best out of all those related works is that aside from not only having a compelling narrative to guide the story, and I'm not saying those games don't, they do. Night in the Woods was the one to showcase and write their young characters the best, as actual realistic characters, ironically, that aren't even human. While we could all have our nitpicks about the individual plot lines of each game, it could very well be a valid observation that the young characters of Life is Strange and Oxenfree were written as exaggerated caricatures of how young people should act like, as if the writers have never met or been angsty young adults themselves. As I was playing and getting to know more of not only the town of Possum Springs, but also our very own best friends, I started getting deeply invested in the personalities and motivations that drive all four of the main characters, especially May. Ironically, based on its aesthetic, the game gets very real as it tackles a multitude of issues the youth could have, like abuse, job security, sacrifice, family, religious beliefs, depression, suicide, and especially discovering oneself. Angus is kind-hearted and cares the most about the group because he never received that kind of care as a child as he got abused by his own parents. Greg is punky and a troublemaker because he believed that he was never going to amount to anything but that until he met Angus. B had to pick up the pieces of her life after her mother died and she had to sacrifice college to work at their store and support what remains of her family. While Mei, distinctly the most distressed of the bunch, has existential doubts about her own place in her own life. These characters had very real motivations that drove their personalities and I can't help but cry for them and love them for who they are, as fictional as they are. And there lies the root of why I think Night in the Woods is such a great game. Unlike other games in the same genre that were just, quote unquote, games for young people, this was a game that had something to say to young people, myself and many included. If you even skimmed through the surface of the game's fandom on sites like Tumblr, you'd realize that the game and characters have resonated so much with young people and adults that have gone through the similar things. While the characters themselves are fictional, the motivations and personality written behind them are very real. And some in fact too real. And although some may say Mei as a protagonist is too childish and immature to be any sort of realistic young adult turning to either anger or impulse, I ask if you remember what it's like to be in your early 20s. If you've planned the rest of your life that early, or had any frustrations about either where you were going or where you've been, most likely if you believe that, you've forgotten what it was like to grow up. By the end of the game, Night in the Woods becomes a mirror aimed at young adults like May, B, Greg, and Angus, telling us, your problems are real. 
and that's okay. With its award-winning level of characterization, Night in the Woods is gonna have a special place in my heart that I can fondly look back to because of the very real friends that I've made. My name is Nez, and thanks for watching. If you haven't tried out Night in the Woods, please do. It's such a nice game. And if you have any thoughts about it, leave your comments down below, as well as like and subscribe so we can grow our channel together.